Hello, thanks for coming to Somatic Yoga with me. I'm Megan McCarthy. And uh, today we're going to do what I call uh, Somatic Yoga's Greatest Hits Playlist. So if I have a full hour during the day, this practice will be about an hour long. Um, this is a, a full body somatics practice that really kind of covers everything. So I hope you enjoy it and thanks for being here with me. You may want a strap. Um, other than that, we will be doing most of the poses, all of the poses lying down on our front, back, and side bodies. And if you want some extra padding, you may have just a mat or you can put a, a blanket underneath or on top of your mat. Make yourself comfortable. All right, so have that strap handy and we're gonna start down on our backs with a body scan. So coming all the way down onto your back. My recommendation is to keep your feet on the floor with the knees bent if there's any discomfort in your low back for this body scan. Otherwise, if you're extending your legs, consider putting a pillow or something underneath your knees just so your legs are completely relaxed as is your low back. So you might put something underneath the knees if you want to extend your legs. And we're going to start from the feet. Just jelly roll your arms and legs and see where they land. Take a few breaths in and out. Feel yourself through the breath and invite yourself in. Send that invitation to spend the next hour or so in your body, into this space, what we call you as a soma. A soma is a, a, a way of seeing yourself from the inside out and in that way that only you can experience within yourself. And then feel your toes. See if you can just feel them, see which toes you can visualize. Sense the soles of your feet, the tops of the feet. Draw circles around your ankles with your mind. And feel your shins and the calves. Maybe notice if your calves are touching the floor, if all the weight's in your heels. Feel the circumference of your knees, right and left. Sense the tops of the thighs and the backs of the thighs. Again, noticing what's touching the ground. And then feel the space all the way from the toes up into the hips. Notice where your legs come into the torso, into the pelvis. Do your legs feel light or heavy or long or short? Just noticing any qualities in the legs. And then sense the pelvis, the front, the sides, the back the base of the pelvis and the base of the spine. You might even feel yourself breathing into this space. The abdomen's moving as you're breathing in and out. Then bring your awareness up the back body, noticing the low back. Is it resting on the floor? Or is there a little arch that lifts it away from the floor? The center of the back and spine feeling your ribs, your ribs resting on the earth, the shoulder blades, the space between the shoulder blades and the ribs, coming up to the tops of the shoulders and sensing that curve in the back of the neck and where that leads right into the base of the head. Feel where your head is resting on the ground. And then let your mind's eye feel the whole back of the body from the heels to the crown of the head going down the arms from the shoulders all the way to the fingertips. Just noticing any parts of your body that are touching the ground. Whatever's not touching the ground, just let it relax into the ground. Take this moment to let everything go. Not doing, but just undoing. Notice if you feel yourself through your muscles or your bones. And then come into the front body, coming back into the abdomen and the navel center. Think of all the organs in the front of the body. Your ribs, chest and lungs and heart. Feel the softness in the front of the throat. And image your whole face as if you were looking in a mirror. What does your face look like? Your eyes, your nose, your mouth, upper and lower lip, your right, your left ear, 
all of your organs of perception bring information into your body. And ask once again all of those organs, just ask them to be present in this practice, in this moment of time, in your body, in your breath, and any sensations that are created. And then just lightly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, just making some movements. And we'll start from the center of our being in the pelvis. So if your legs are extended, bend your knees, place your feet on the floor in constructive rest, which means we want to align the hip, the knee, and the ankle. If you came to a 90 degree angle with the leg, you're just going to drop your foot down. So your foot should be right about underneath the knee, as wide as your hip. Both feet there. I like to lift my pelvis lengthen through the tailbone. And we start with just some pelvic rocking. Feel your breath through your belly. Inhaling, the abdomen rises and expands. Exhaling, the belly empties. As you inhale, imagine the abdomen floating up. And as it floats up towards the sky, the low back and low ribs lift. So you'll feel an arch, a larger arch in your low back. As you breathe out, draw in through the navel center and gently press your low back and low ribs into the floor and feel the tailbone lift. So the pelvis is rocking. As you're inhaling, the pelvis is rocking forward and upward. As you're exhaling, the pelvis is rocking back and down. You can feel your sense self from the sense of, a, of the uh, tailbone, tailbone pressing into the floor at the top of the inhale, tailbone lifting at the bottom of the exhale. Feel this movement from the sacrum. Feel yourself rolling through your sacrum. As you breathe in, you'll feel yourself go from the top of the sacrum to the tip of the sacrum, right at, towards the base of the spine. As you breathe out, you'll come back to the top of that triangle of the sacrum, top of the hips. You might also feel it from the front body. Notice on inhalation how the abdomen is expansive, and soft, and as you exhale, you might feel that little bit of drawing in through the abdominal wall, a little contraction. If you're sensing that in the abdomen and familiar with the pelvic floor muscles, that diamond shape that goes from the pubis to the anus and the two sit bones, we can add that movement as well. So as you're inhaling, pelvic floor stretches like it's coming towards your heels, just like the abdomen is expanding. As you're exhaling and the abdomen draws in, so does the pelvic floor, it recoils into the body. Simple movement. So now we spent some time in the pelvis. Notice anything going on in your head and neck. Is your neck naturally flowing with the pelvis? What we might feel is as your inhaling chin comes towards the chest and as your exhaling chin goes away from the chest. So a full tail to tongue movement. Just doing a few more of these. Sensing the ride of the spine arching away from the floor on the inhale and the spine gently curling into the floor on exhale. And we'll come back to the center. Keeping your feet on the floor, just feel your toes for a moment and lift and release your toes. Try to lift them as high as you can. You'll feel the muscles in the feet and then release them down. And you might even release them one at a time, pinky toe and then work towards the big toe. So just touching the bottoms of the toes to the floor after you lift them. You can also go the opposite direction, big toe and then out to the little toe, just acknowledging your toes. And then keeping toes on the floor, feel your heels. And as you inhale, lift your heels slightly. You'll feel your calf muscles shorten and the fronts of the ankle stretch and exhale, release them down. You're just inhaling and lifting and exhaling, releasing. Lifting the heels and dropping the heels. Relax. This is, next one is where you might want to bring your strap in. We're going to go into the knees and we'll do our uh, left leg first. So if you like to use the strap, take the strap around the back of the hamstring. So not up at the knee joint, but right behind the belly of the hamstrings. Keep your thigh bone straight up and down, so not drawn towards you, but kneecap right over the front of the hip joint. And as you're inhaling, you're extending through the left leg and exhaling and dropping down. Inhale into extension and exhale down. 
And what I'm trying to do is really focus on moving from the knee. So I'm trying to keep my ankle, my toes relaxed and initiate the movement from the knee. Feel the thigh muscles. Next one, take it up and begin to keep that leg extended wherever it's comfortable for you. So you might still have a bend in the knee and begin to move the toes again and move the ankle and just explore any movements in your foot. Stay present. What muscles do you feel in the sole of the foot, top of the foot, your shin and your calf? You can move toes and ankle circles, waking them up. Then relax the lower leg down. I'm gonna go right into the left hip. So feel the le left hip, the whole circumference of the hip and begin to make some circles with the left hip. A lot of these movements are, almost all of these, are what I do in bed in the morning before I even step out onto the floor. So they're really accessible. I'm making these circles through the left hip. Watch that you're not using your lower leg, you're using your hip. Think of the circumference of the hip going one direction, finding your full range of motion, and you can switch and go the opposite direction. We're going to continue on with that hip. So we're going to place the left foot back on the floor, but I'm going to have you widen your feet so that your heels are to the outsides of the hips. Continuing with that left leg, feel the pinky toe side of the left foot and you're just going to fall onto the pinky toe side on inhalation. So you're going to feel a stretch through your inner thigh. And then as you exhale, come back up. As you inhale, fall onto the big toe side. Let that leg fall inward. Exhale, come back up. So if you think of just your left leg like a windshield wiper, you're letting it go onto pinky toe, come back up on exhale, big toe, come back up. See if you can keep your right leg still and your pelvis is still squared with the floor. So I'm not letting my right hip roll to the left. You might even keep a hand on your right hip. Just moving that left hip and foot. And if you wanna make it a little more interesting, you can make this movement from your hip and your thigh. You can also direct it from your foot. See what it feels like to rock from the big toe to the little toe side. So just explore different ways to get the leg through this movement. It's internal rotation and external rotation. Last one. Coming back, you're gonna leave the right leg where it is. Take the left foot and cross it on the right thigh. Take a moment there. Let your low back relax. And then if it's comfortable, you're going to lift the right leg off the floor just slightly. So the right leg is strong and make some circles with that right leg. Like you're living, giving the left leg a ride, circling it around. Feel that stretch through the back line. Nice gentle circles. This is just all part of the waking up. I call this the the gentle joint motion or body prayer. You wanna wake up the joints first. Find your range of motion. And then set that right foot back down. Uncross the left leg. You can either keep both feet on the floor or take both legs long. And if it's comfortable, I encourage you to take both legs long. Take about five to eight breaths. Feel your two legs again from the toes all the way up through the pelvis. And just notice if you feel any difference in your body. Remember that first body scan, how your legs felt, how the back of your body was resting. Does one leg feel lighter or heavier, longer, or shorter? Do you feel yourself more from your muscles or your bones? Just sensing. Staying present in that ever-changing body. And sometimes your upper body wants to respond. I know that I will very intuitively just start to rock my head and I don't question why. It just feels good for my neck. And then come back to the center. And we're gonna do all of those on the second side for the right leg. So place your feet back on the floor. Let your backside relax. We'll be coming into the right leg 
and this is the opportunity to use your strap so you can put the strap around the back of the right thigh if you'd like. We're going to use the knee joint to extend, so relax the lower leg and on inhalation extend upward and exhale come down. And think of your knee joint as a description of a joint. It's right there in the, in the name. It joins two parts of your body. So the knee joins the lower leg and upper leg and just notice what you feel in your lower leg and upper leg, keeping the foot and the ankle relaxed. The thigh bone stays still and is 90 degrees from the spine. And then we'll take the next one into an extension that's comfortable for you, so you may have more bend in the knee or straighter. And now once again, play with moving the toes, the ankle, just to explore. It doesn't have to be any particular movement pattern. Sensing the calf, the shin, sole of the foot, the top of the foot. You might even feel it all the way down into your hip or your back. What does the foot movement say to the rest of your leg, to your body? And then we'll relax that foot back down. You can remove the strap if you're using it. We're going to do our circles for the right hip. So lifting that right foot slightly off the floor, you're making circles with the right hip. So think of drawing smiley faces with your right kneecap, if that's a way to think of it. Just exploring the mobility, the range of motion in your right hip. And we try to keep the pelvis still and quiet. Move from that hip crease. So if you find yourself rocking all over the place, keep the back and spine relaxed. Notice if you feel your abdominal muscles at any point, outer hip, inner thigh, and you can switch the direction of the circles. Sort of lubing up the hip joint, getting it, getting it ready, and then place that foot on the floor. We'll widen both feet so that the heels are just to the outside of the hips. We're gonna do the internal and external rotation for the right leg. So left leg will stay still, left hip stays still. Feel the pinky toe side of the right foot and inhale onto that pinky toe side. Your inner thigh will stretch. As you exhale, come back to the flat foot. Inhale onto the big toe side, internal rotation, just letting that thigh bone come forward and inward. Exhale back. I'm just sensing that external rotation, that space of center, and the internal rotation. And usually we automatically make this movement from the hip and the thigh. But see if you can initiate it from your foot. Rolling on to the pinky toe side and the big toe side. You can really reach the thigh forward if you want. Notice that arch in the right waist. Last one. And then back to the center, walk your legs in. So the right heel or left heel straight off the red, left buttocks. Cross your right ankle on your left thigh and take a moment there, just let it open up. This might be plenty for a moment, feeling that back right hip stretch out. If it feels okay, we lift the left foot off the floor and imagine giving the right leg a ride with the left leg. And you might sense more of your abdominal muscles as you're stretching the backside. Nice slow circles, you can go towards your body and away from your body side to side. Just play with the movement pattern, see what each movement pattern creates, what type of sensations in your body. Can you keep the shoulders relaxed, the jaws, or let the upper body respond? It's feeling this and sometimes it needs to make space and it'll tell you that because it needs to move a little bit to reposition itself. Rolling that around. And then take that left foot back down to the floor. Uncross the legs. We're going to take a full body yawn. So take your legs long again. 
reach your arms up overhead, arch your back, tighten the muscles to the bones. So this is more of a pandiculation, what we call pandiculation is when we're gonna tighten the muscles to the bones and then lengthen, squeeze. Think of squeezing the muscles to the bones. One more breath in and then an exhalation, let go. We're gonna keep the legs long and you're gonna position your body in sort of a five point star. So your knees can go a little bit wider, your heels can be wider, so they're out outside your hips and your arms about at your sides. Usually if we go all the way overhead, there's too much pulling in the shoulders. So see what feels right for you. We're gonna do the short version of a cross body movement, the five point star. So first just visualize yourself. Where would your center be if you were a star? Five point star, the head, the two hands and your feet. So you might feel your center right in the pelvis. It might be more in the ribs. There's not a right or wrong. Just feel where your center is. And think of yourself like a piece of taffy, lovely taffy. And we're going to pull from that center. So if somebody were to grab either end of the taffy, visualize your right foot and toes and the left hand and arm. Right, think of the whole right leg and the whole left arm. But also notice where they plug into the armpit and the hip. And you're gonna turn your right toes up and your knee. So you're gonna feel the muscles engage just by turning the toes and the knee up and then make a fist with the left hand and reach the right foot forward and the left arm back. Squeeze, so this is the pandiculation, squeezing the muscles and then reaching. And exhale, let go. We're gonna do just that side a few times. So right foot forward, toes point up, tighten and reach. Left hand reaching the opposite direction. So right from that center, you're pulling that taffy and then letting go. And you can do one breath per movement or you can take it to that end point and hold for a few breaths. Just remember when you're holding pose, you're not holding your breath, you're still breathing. And then that complete release all the way to the end, that space of grace. You can even shake out the right leg. What I want you to notice is that this isn't just a movement of our arm and leg, so it's not just the limbs. See if you can get your torso involved. So plug your arm bone, upper arm bone, into the shoulder girdle and plug your hip into the hip girdle and draw the right waist and hip forward and the left shoulder back. So you'll feel this, this arching at the waist as well. And then releasing. So notice if you can feel this movement through the torso. Let's do two more. Visualizing yourself from right toes to left hand and then through that middle and letting go. All right. Take your arms down for a moment. Shake your legs out. Let that right leg relax or roll your shoulders around. We're going to do the opposite side. So now visualize that center again. Left toes to right fingers all the way like an X, right? Think of yourself like a human X and this is the other side of your X. You're gonna roll your left toes and kneecap up towards the sky, press through the heel so you should feel the muscles engage onto the bones. And then there's a push forward and it's not just the leg, the whole hip will go forward. As you're doing the left leg, reach the right arm towards the back right corner of your mat and then let go. Inhale and reach in opposite directions. Think of an X or that piece of taffy pulling from the center and then letting go. So not just the limbs, let the waist move. Their left hip goes forward towards the front of your mat, the right shoulder to the back, let go. Or see if you can feel the stretch through the left waist and the right armpit area and then releasing completely. You're moving to your breath, so you can do one breath, one movement, or hold for a few breaths. And let go. Let's do three more on this side. So visualizing yourself from the center, reaching out left foot, right arm, and letting go. So engage left hip muscles, right shoulder muscles. The other side is quiet. So watch you're not tightening right leg or left arm. Last one. So this is our cross body patterning, how our body balances us from the right shoulder to the left hip and then the left shoulder to the right hip. All right, we're gonna do that same thing, but we're gonna alternate. So this, this is just a little bit more of a brain game. You gotta pay closer attention, checking to see that only one side of your X is 
um, active at a time. So right toes point up and kneecap, left hand. So reach through the right leg and left arm. Exhale, let go. And then right arm, left leg. Reach in opposite directions and let go. So you can think of taffy or human X, but you're pulling yourself from a center, tightening, and then just releasing completely. You may find your head wants to roll. Just let it, like I said, let the upper body respond. Releasing. Releasing. Feel how long you can make yourself. And then letting go. Last one. All right. So we're, we're pretty long and pretty wide right now. You can stay there and hang out for a few breaths. Or if it feels better, take your legs in. You might want to just windshield wiper the legs side to side. You could hug your knees into your chest. We're getting ready to come off of our back. So you can hug your knees in if you'd like. Make circles on the low back. And then we're going to be rolling to our right side. So I'm going to turn right towards you. And when we get there, you want to slide your thighs up so they're 90 degrees from the spine and your shins are parallel to the, sh to the long edge of your mat or they're parallel to your spine. This is also where um, if you find that your arm is not comfortable to rest your head on, then put a pillow or something underneath your head. We're going to start with the legs first, then we're gonna move into some rotations for the torso. Moving on to our side body greatest hits, so working into the torso, but first we'll do the legs. So feeling your um, big toe side of your feet pressing together. On an inhalation, you're gonna lift just the top leg and then exhale and take it down. So what we're trying to do is activate these outer hip muscles, lifting it up on inhale and dropping it down. And this is one of the ones that's really easy to overdo. I'll see people like lift their whole leg up. All you need to do is barely lift it. See if you can lift from your outer hip muscles and then slowly use gravity to resist as you come down, lifting up and letting go. And same thing, if it feels good and you've got these muscles in your right hip activating, you could hold it up there for a few breaths, feel those hip muscles. And then let it come all the way down, relax it. We're gonna take the right knee and slide it forward and back. Just a little bit of forward and back. So this is gonna take the right hip forward and back. This is getting us ready for a rotation that we'll do in a moment. Just forward and back. It's like you're sliding your inner thighs together. All right. Then we're going to do the, the pair to the, I call that one the clamshell. We're going to do the mermaid tail. These are all on my greatest list hits, hits uh, playlist. So now you're going to take uh, your, your knees are going to stay together and your big toe side of your foot is going to lift up. So on an exhalation, lift the big toe side of the foot. And what this is doing is it's internally rotating your right thigh. And you're inhaling and coming down and letting go. We're gonna do the lift on an exhalation because this is gonna get into our side body muscles. We're gonna be contracting these side body muscles in a moment. So exhaling up, feel the thigh roll in, inhale down. One of the things I'll see a lot with this one is the foot's going, usually not forward, but people will take their foot way back here. Keep the feet lined up so the heels are in the same line as you turn in. Once we've got the leg moving, we're going to add the upper body for this one. So you're going to take your right hand and we're going to create a headband. You're going to reach your right hand all the way overhead so your arm's over your ear. Then come around and put the right fingers just above the left ear. So I don't want to be back on my head. I don't want to be way forward. I want to feel like I've got a headband coming right across my head. And now when you're ready, you're going to exhale and not only lift the leg, but you're gonna lift your elbow towards your foot and feel the side body, the right side body muscles contract and then inhale, come back down. And for me, I like to get my left arm out of the way now, letting the head come down, but you may have a pillow or a bolster underneath your head if that's better for you, right? 
So you're exhaling and imagine squeezing, shortening all those right side body muscles. Inhale, come down and exhale and squeeze in. And as you inhale and come down, you can even lift your right ribs a little bit, stretch those right ribs, lift the left waist off the floor, press that right elbow towards the back edge of your mat and then exhale, squeeze in. Inhale, come down so you'll feel a lateral curve through your spine, right ribs lift. Exhale, press those left ribs down, tighten through your right side. Let's do two more. You might be holding. You can always hold if you want to stop. Exhale, side body waist. And we're making sure we don't drop that arm forward because that's a compensation or way back here. Last one, elbows in line with the hip. And then come down, relax. All right. So that was a lateral move for our torso. Now we're going to take our torso into a spiral move. My very favorite spirals. So this one, you're going to need to take that left arm out in front of you. You can't use it as a pillow. So it may be that you want to use something under your head. And if you are using something under your head, take it so it goes beyond the back of the head because you're going to be rolling your head and you want to make sure it still supports you. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the right hand right at the ribs and let that arm completely relax. Let your legs stay together. As you're breathing in, feel your right shoulder blade and try to roll the right shoulder blade towards the floor behind you and you'll feel your right thigh slide. So it's like my arm is just sort of dead weight and I'm rolling through my torso. Exhale, roll forward like you're going to drop the front of the shoulder to the floor. Inhale, roll and open. Feel the spine rotate. You can let your head follow. Exhale and close. So you're going to feel maybe your leg sliding and your arm moving, but move this from your torso. Spiral your torso to the right as you breathe in. Feel the space through your ribs, through your right side body. And then come back and spiral to the opposite side. If this is going well and it feels comfortable for you and you want a little more stretching, then we take position two with the hand. The right hand comes to the back of the head, wherever it works best for you. And now you can really exhale and take that right elbow down to the floor. Feel the muscles tighten around your collarbones, all your pectoral muscles. As you inhale, take still the right shoulder blade, but also the elbow now to the floor behind you. Rotate into it. Let your head just follow. You want to make sure at no point are you lifting your head up, right? The floor, notice everything that's touching the floor because whatever's touching the floor is always remaining supported. You're just rolling, so less effort. Inhaling and opening up. Feel that spiral. And you might feel more tightness through the ribs or the chest. You might feel it in the hip. Doesn't matter, stay with it. It's just the greatest hits playlist taking you through spirals. Sunny spirals today. This is one of my favorite moves. And if you feel like you want to stop and hold this, you can. You can hold it in the spiral. You can also hold it closed. If the arm is giving you grief and the shoulder's trying to brace and hold that arm, then come back in your hold and place your arm on your body. Just let the shoulder fall. So extending the arm is going to strain the shoulder joint, and then it's not going to want to release. And we're trying to get the shoulders down to the floor. Take a few breaths there. Last breath out. And then coming all the way back, we've got one more on this side. We're gonna go into flexion and extension, which is another really important one to me, especially for our legs, but our whole body. So extension through the is, is when we open our whole front body. Flexion is when we stretch our back body. So starting with your legs still stacked, you can take them a little bit longer and you're gonna lift that right leg up. So the heel is about at the height of the hip. You're going to reach your left arm towards the back left corner of the room and your right leg towards the right front corner. 
So it's almost like when we're doing that X, but now it's the same side of the body working together. Reaching, so this is the extension. You can even reach through your ankle. So the, the knee, the hip, and the ankle are an extension. The arm's an extension. And as you exhale, you're gonna bring that leg back. I like to just drop it and then roll back into that twist so you can take your hand to your ribs and drop the right shoulder, let the head roll. Inhale into the extension. So we get extension on the inhale and then roll on the exhale into the rotation. We'll add the flexion in a moment. Reaching as you inhale, dropping into the twist. So if you want more flexion, you can draw your knee in. Inhale, reach your head, looking over at your right hand. Exhale, chin towards the chest as you let the head roll. So make sure that it's comfortable for your neck. Let your side bodies do some of the work. So the torso, enjoy. Yeah, don't forget that part. Enjoy, feel and enjoy. Two more rounds if you'd like, or if you wanna stop and hold anywhere you can. I'm reaching for the birds, the singing birds. All right, and then come back, and sometimes it feels really nice to pull your knees in and just come into a fetal curl. You can rock yourself, so this is that, that flexion. You're letting your back body open up. If this doesn't work for you, we're gonna be going on to the right, the right side, but you could come onto your back and roll your knees into your chest, so we could stay here for, we'll be here for about 10 more breaths. Or you could come here on your back and hug your knees in. Find some space where you can just let go and release. I wish I could put my camera on all of the birds that are singing to us right now. So wherever you are, slowly make your way onto your right side. Remember that if you want that pillow underneath your head, it's there. Grab a couch cushion, anything that works for you. <clears throat> On to the right side. You can use your arm as a pillow, at least for the start. And then draw your thighs up so that they're 90 degrees from your spine. And your shins out so that they're parallel to the long edge of the mat or parallel to your spine. Just let the weight of your body fall onto the floor. So notice the connection of the right side. And then the first thing we're gonna do is that lifting of the inner left knee. So press the big toe side of the feet together. And as you inhale, lift the knee, feel the outer left hip muscles and exhale, drop down. Sometimes they don't turn on right away. So you, I, you'll see, I do things very automatically now. I'll place my hand there because this, uh, this is my side that, that likes to sleep a little bit too much. So I put my hand there and I say, please turn on. Sometimes you might feel it in your inner thigh or other muscles. So engage, squeeze the muscles in that outer buttocks. Think of squeezing your buttocks muscles and then lift up and then complete release, let it go. And sometimes if you're lifting really high, try to just lift a couple inches and hold. It might be more of a challenge to lift, to lift less than to lift more. You have surprises like that sometimes. Last one. <laughs> Take it down. So let's release that a little bit. Feel where your thighs are touching your knees and just slide that left knee forward and back. Slide your thighs together. It should feel nice. This is rotating the pelvis back and forth, just like when we walk, one hip comes forward and one's left behind. It's one of the movements of our walking. That juiciness in the pelvis, the center of our universe. And then come back to the center. This one, you're gonna keep your knees together, feel your big toe side of your feet. And now you're going to exhale and lift the bottom foot. Think of rolling your top thigh bone inward. So internal rotation and then inhale and take it back down. Exhaling and lifting, inhaling down. You might even feel that tightening or that shortening through the left waist, right where your belt would be or your belt loops. And then release it on the inhale. 
If it feels better for you, just continue to do the leg. Otherwise, we begin to add the side body in. So we take the left arm, reach it all the way overhead, and the arm is going to stay over the ear. So I don't want to be in the front of my face. I don't want to be covering my face. I don't want to be behind. And you're going to wrap around so that your fingers are just above the ear. I like to take that right arm more forward. You may have something underneath your head. Point your elbow up towards the sky or keep your elbow in line with the hip. And then on an exhalation, lift. Imagine bring your armpit towards your hip and lift the foot up. Inhale, come all the way down. And exhale, lift up. And if you want to add a little more spiciness to this, exhale and contract that left side. So feel those left side body muscles. As you inhale, reach your right elbow towards the front of your mat. Lift your right ribs. Press the left ribs up towards the sky. Exhale. So a little more of a lateral bend. Think of a C curve for your spine going both directions. Inhale, reach that armpit and hip, left armpit and hip away from one another. Exhale, squeeze them towards one another. Let that side body find its groove. And we're getting the internal rotation of the thigh as well. Your head is heavy in your hand, but you're also going to get into those side neck muscles. You might feel the left side of the neck, but support the head with the hand. Let's do two more of these, inhaling and exhaling, or you might hold on that contraction. Close your eyes if you're holding and feel it. Feel all the strength through that left waist and even your armpit, the muscles underneath your armpit, right? And then slowly release on inhalation all the way down. Let it go. All right, we're going to do the rotation. So moving more into the pelvis itself, or excuse me, the torso itself. So this one, you'll need to have the right arm in front of you. So put something underneath your head if, if it doesn't come to the floor comfortably. Place your left hand somewhere in your rib cage or somewhere between your navel center and your rib cage. Just let the left arm completely relax. So this movement comes from our torso. So think shoulder blades, armpit, and ribs. As you inhale, you're going to bring that left shoulder blade towards the floor behind you and let your head roll and exhale and slowly come back as far as you want to roll. So you might roll all the way onto your forehead, dropping the left shoulder. Inhale, roll open to the left. Exhale, roll closed to the right. And just spiraling with the torso. Let your head follow along. Arm is relaxed, so we're not trying to move the torso from the arm yet. We add the arm to enhance this movement, but it is a torso movement. So if we want to add to this, take your left hand somewhere to the back of the head. I keep my pinky like right at the base of the skull, but make sure it's comfortable for you. And now as you exhale, you can bring that left elbow down to the floor in front of you, almost squeezing like you're squeezing the muscles around your collarbones, your pectoral muscles and pressing the elbow into the floor. Feel the space in your upper back on that left shoulder blade and then inhale left shoulder blade to the floor and roll open. Exhale and close. And this one's always interesting for me because on this side all of the sassiness that I feel is in my left hip and my low back. And this is my troubled side in my low back. And when I did the right side, it's all in my shoulder and my armpit, my chest area. So just noticing things like that, not because it matters one way or the other, one is right or wrong or good or bad, but that's all part of what we call that interception, learning about the space inside of you. And then being able to use your witness mind, which is just this idea that we can be present without having to have an opinion about it, right? You can just feel it for what it is. Okay, I'm tight here, I'm not tight there, right? Letting that hip slide, have fun with it. Greatest hits. Open up one more time, or maybe you wanna keep moving through. If you wanna stop and hold that rotation, it's there. If there's any pulling in the front of the shoulder, then take your arm and rest it on your body instead. 
Just letting the shoulder blade fall. Feel the weight of the body if you're holding, just falling. If I could tell you how lovely the sunshine feels right now. Hmm. And if you're holding, slowly roll back out on your exhalation. You can pause there. We're going to go into our extension and flexion or extension and rotation first. So take your legs out a little bit longer. And then you're going to lift your left leg up. And you want to lift it to about the heels at about the height of the hip. So if you were standing, the same distance between your feet as if you were standing. So that's going to activate that leg line. And then we're going into extension. So the thigh, the knee, and the ankle can extend behind you, the leg. And the arm is going to reach the opposite way. So think of that piece of taffy again, but it's the whole left side. Toes going towards the front left corner of the room. Fingers going towards the back right. That's your inhale. Feel all that space through the left side. And then as you exhale, bring that left leg forward. You could just drop it, left hand to your waist, and spiral into your twist. Inhale, reaching. I like to add the head to this. Like my head, my gaze is following that left hand, looking up at it. But decide what's appropriate for your neck. And you might really like the extension into the spiral. You can also do the extension more into like a, a curl. So I sort of squeeze that leg in. Reaching. If you want to find a hold, you can. <laughs> My buddy. Reaching opposite directions. Feel all that space through your left ribs. And in the top of the inhale, breathe into the left ribs. Feel the muscles between the ribs. And exhale back. All right. Take that last one. And then when you're ready, you can draw your knees into a little fetal curl. If you'd rather go onto your back body and hug your knees in, please do that. I always like just a little bit of rocking. Little undulations for the spine here. We're going to be going on to our front side next, so working on strengthening your, or waking up the muscles of the back body. <sighs> the one missing link in my somatic greatest hits practice, a very important link too, I might add. But just resting, breathing into your body, moment of gratitude. So back bends and microphones don't work so well, so I'm going to take that off and set it up there and hopefully you can hear me just fine. So we're going to come on to our front side and come down, shimmy your legs side to side. You can even take your feet up towards the sky and rock your thighs into the floor. See how wide your legs want to be apart so that your low back is relaxed your pelvis feels broad and spacious so some people like their legs really wide some people closer together and so you can get the tops of the thighs to the floor so we don't want to have the toes turning out or turning way in but more the tops of the feet to the floor and then just jelly roll the legs on the floor now we're going to take our arms into crocodile pose for a moment so opposite hand to elbow slide your elbows in and rest your forehead on your top arm. And just like we did a body scan on our front side, we're gonna just take a brief moment to body scan from here. Noticing what parts of your body are in connection with the earth. Taps the feet. And if that's giving you any grief, you can put bolsters underneath the ankles or a pillow underneath your ankles 
letting the tops of the feet rest, the weight of the thigh bones. Feel the front of your pelvis and your abdomen. And then see if you can start to breathe more into your chest. So this is gonna invite you not into the belly breath that we did in the beginning of the practice, but notice where your front ribs are touching the earth. See if you can redirect your breath into the lower lobes, the middle and the upper lobes of the lungs. So from the ribs to the collarbones in the front side, or from the lower ribs all the way to the tops of the shoulder blades on the back side, and just breathing into that space. Think of the entire circumference of your ribs. And notice how there's a natural buoyancy to the breath. Your body wants you to lift and expand the front on inhalation, and it wants you to rest into the earth on exhalation. It's, it's a very intuitive, back bends are very intuitive and the breath is a huge part of the movement. So when you're ready, we're just gonna change the shape of the arms and you can either do like a goal post arm where your elbows are at the height of the shoulders or you can do more of like a diamond shape wherever your arms feel completely relaxed and you're not pushing into the arms. So let the arms just be on holiday. Chin or forehead to the floor. And then take that breath into your chest. And instead of trying to lift your head off the floor, float forward with the crown of the head and just lift the chest slightly. So that we're not changing the shape of the neck. We're not shortening the back of the neck. We're lifting from the collarbones and the neck is staying long in the back. And then exhale and come down onto one cheek and just completely let that cheek rest. When you're ready, again, inhale into the chest and the lungs. Float up, reach the crown of the head forward, lift from your collarbones and your sternum. Exhale, turning on to the opposite cheek and just resting. I think somebody out there got a new boat. <laughs> and we're floating through. I call this baby cobra or low cobra. So you're gonna inhale Use the breath to initiate the movement. Float up. You might even pause at the top of the inhale when you're lifted. Feel all those muscles in the back body engaged. Exhale. Slowly give yourself up into gravity, but let go all the way. At the bottom of the exhale, there's a complete release. Cheek is resting on the floor, your chest, the pelvis, the thighs, and then inhaling up again. And if you find you're not releasing muscles, you can take more breaths with your cheek on the floor relaxing. If you'd like to feel more engagement through the back line, then as you're lifting up and reaching the head forward, slightly press the tops of the feet and the tops of the thighs into the floor. But imagine drawing the knees up towards your hips. So you're gonna feel, if you press the tops of the feet down and reach your big toes towards the back of the mat, you're gonna feel more action in the hamstrings and the glutes. So the buttocks muscles and the hamstrings, that's part of your back line. But then exhale, come all the way down and release. And you're moving at your pace. So if you're taking extra rest, that's fine. You can also lift up and hold. Remember to keep your gaze just in front of the nose, so not lifting the neck up, but reaching out through the crown of the head. So this way we're actually strengthening the neck too. Feel that whole back line. Arms are soft and relaxed. And come back down. Take about 10 more seconds to explore the strength of your back line. How those muscles will turn on to support the lift of the front body. And then how they just as easily turn off and relax even the low back. Think of the breath like a big balloon lifting you and dropping you. Think of a hot air balloon. Last one for wherever you are. And coming down, once you've come down, 
You want to make sure that whole back line releases. You could just swing your legs, shift your hips from side to side. If you enjoy something like a cat in a cow pose, you could come on to, sorry, re-clipping mic, come on to all fours, do a cat cow. You could press into child's pose if your knees and your thighs like that to open up that back line. So you got to decide what works for you. Otherwise, we are going back onto our backside. So that's another good place to, to find yourself after those back bends. And coming onto your backside. Hugging knees into the chest and giving yourself a little massage through the pelvis. And it's not just the pelvis, you know, it's, it might be easy to find the circles or the massage through the pelvis, but you could also rock your head and your shoulder blades into the floor. I call this the uh, weeble wobble move. If anybody remembers weeble wobble, but they don't fall down, right? <laughs> side to side. <laughs> the weeble wobble. <clears throat> or the other thing that sometimes feels really good is because we really did, we did work the whole body all the way around and from bottom to top is come back and do a couple of those pelvic tilts. The simplicity of that very first movement we did, inhaling, lifting low back and low ribs, exhaling, gently pressing them into the floor. And just see how that feels now. Is there, is the body feel lighter or heavier? Are you more in your bones or your muscles? Is there more ease of the movement or just more, more awareness? I always like to take a pose that I start with and then do it again at the end. All right. And then any final movements that you enjoy for yourself before we do our relaxation, deciding where you want that to be. I think my dog, Lucy, has been doing Shavasana for the last hour, so we got some catching up to do. <laughs> but take yourself into a space where we can do another body scan. That's what we're going to do today. Begin and end with a body scan. That's when you should say to yourself, how lovely, how lovely I am. That's not sarcastic, really. How lovely you are. Feel the loveliness from your toes to the crown of the head. And then from the fingers into the center of the heart. But I want you to do your own guided body scan, starting from your feet, working up. And what we did, we went from feet through the legs, got to the pelvis, then we did the back of the body. And then we went through the arms and shoulders, then we did the front last. But you can go in any order you'd like. Just notice whatever you can notice and even notice what you don't notice. Use any descriptive words to describe how you feel right now. And not just good or bad or relaxed or peaceful. Be as descriptive as you can. Imagine that your body is writing a story about you. It's a very descriptive story, a beautiful vocabulary. What does that story say? What is this chapter right now in this moment? It's just writing itself. What is it writing? What is it saying to you? story has been set today to to 
premiere to film and it has it has a playlist right we went through a whole playlist today for your body and see if you can recall some of that playlist and not what we did you don't have to remember specific movements in that playlist but what were the feelings they created what were the images so add that playlist to your your body's writing go back and remember remember the things that you said to yourself the things that you felt not because we attach to them quite the opposite because we notice that we are always changing our emotions our sensations are always changing we can be grounded in our bones and know that sensations are always changing even when we're still sometimes even more so when we're still you feel ready to you can come back into your toes and wiggle your toes a happy sort of wiggle you can rotate your ankles jelly roll your legs from side to side or even bend your knees and gently bounce your legs like basketballs dribble them you feel your pelvis shift your pelvis from side to side and come into your fingers you can wiggle your fingers rotate your wrists maybe move your elbows and your shoulders and feel the space all the way from the base of the spine to the base of the head if just the head wants to move or if your spine wants to do small rotations undulations anything else to wake you up remembering where you are right now but still being present in this space in your body if you want to take a full body yawn to finish do that reach your arms and legs long like you're starting the day all over again with a whole sense of new sense of awareness and appreciation for every little thing that your body does you can stay where you are longer or come up to a seated posture Whether we look at it from a biomechanical standpoint or mental, emotional, or energetic, the body is an amazing piece of machinery, more than just physical machinery. There's so many layers to it. And some we can explain and read about in textbooks, but others we cannot. And the only way to understand those is to experience them, to embody them in this practice. Thank you for doing that with me today. Peace, stay well, and stay love. I miss you. Namaste.